Hello, I am Professor Srinidhi. Welcome to the first session of Aircraft Engine Selection. So in this session about engine selection, we are going to discuss about introduction to the engine propulsion selection, turbojet engine sizing, install thrust correction, spreadsheet for turbojet engine sizing, propeller propulsion system and steps for propeller design for cruise. Appropriate propulsion system for an aircraft depends on a number of factor like design Mach number, altitude, fuel efficiency and cost. The piston engine driven propeller was the first form of propulsion for historic aircraft. Modern designs have the advantage of providing the lowest fuel consumption and the lowest cost. It is also having disadvantage of a low thrust to weight ratio and produce high noise and vibration. Turbojet, the maximum altitude for piston engine aircraft is limited by a decrease in engine horsepower with altitude due to decreasing atmospheric pressure. This can be overcome to some extent through a turbocharger which increases the air intake manifold pressure. So turbocharged piston engines can maintain a constant horsepower up to an altitude of approximately 20,000 feet. Presently, most piston engine designs are used with smaller, lighter weight aircraft. Turbojet driven propeller aircraft are an improvement on piston engine aircraft. With these, the majority of the energy in the exhaust is extracted by turbine stage, which is used to turn the propeller. The number of engines is specified by the need to produce a sufficient amount of thrust based on mission requirements and the available thrust per engine. If possible, a design should use the fewest number of engines necessary. This generally leads to a simpler, lighter, more efficient and less expensive aircraft. Commercial passenger aircraft certified under federal government USA regulations. At least two engines are required. Engine rating. The maximum performance of an engine under various conditions is specified by the engine rating. These ratings correspond to different thrust conditions that are specified for takeoff, maximum climb, and maximum cruise. The takeoff rating is the maximum thrust that the engine is certified to produce. This is generally specified for short periods of time of the order of 5 minutes to be used only at takeoff. For turbojet engines, the takeoff rating is specified at sea level static thrust SLST. The takeoff Rating is generally used when sizing an engine for a design. If an engine is equipped with afterburners, the takeoff rating is also the maximum rating with afterburners. The maximum climb rating is the maximum thrust the engine is certified to produce for normal climb operation. This rating is from 90 to 93 percent of the takeoff rating. Maximum cruise rating is the maximum thrust that the engine is certified to produce for normal cruise. Normal cruise. This corresponds to 80 percent of the takeoff rating. In addition, the cruise rating is for continuous operation with no time limits. 
turbojet engine sizing the ideal situation in a new design is to find an existing turbojet engine that meet the mission requirements perfectly but in most cases this will not happen but let us consider this and the designer would start with an existing engine with characteristics that are close to those needed in the design and scale it up or down based on suitable scaling laws it is possible to develop scaling laws based on conservation of mass and momentum for fluid flow the thrust force t is given by m dot into v minus v a plus a e into p a minus p a where m dot is the mass flow rate v is the velocity and p is pressure and the relative subscripts a and e refers to atmosphere and jet exit jet exit conditions respectively the turbojet engines are designed to increase the momentum of the incoming air but not the exit pressure so that's why p e is almost equal to p a if we consider the thrust then v a is also equal to zero so that will give you t is equal to just m dot into v so the thrust of a turbojet engine should vary with respect to that of a reference engine like t is equal to t reference into m dot v by m dot v of reference engine it is a reasonable assumption that the jet exit velocity ve is not a function of the thrust so therefore ve is equal to ve of reference engine and t is equal to t reference into m dot by m dot of reference engine so the mass flow rate of air through the engine is m dot is equal to rho a v of jet exit condition that's equal to rho into v into pi d square by 4 where d is the engine diameter and v is the bulk air velocity if we consider a reference engine with an exit diameter d e then the mass flow rate through any engine is related to that of reference engine that is m dot is equal to m dot of reference into d by d reference whole square based on this the diameter of any engine is related to diameter of reference engine so the ratio of diameter to diameter of reference engine a jet exit condition is equal to mass flow rate ratio of mass flow rate to the mass flow rate of reference engine whole to the power 1 by 2 so the diameter ratio can be put in terms of thrust ratio as d by d reference is equal to t by t reference to the power 1 by 2 so these equations have been based on conservation laws for the airflow and provide a useful scale factor corresponding to the ratio of a desired thrust to that of a reference engine the weight so the weight and length of a turbojet engine are based on empirical relations which is given by w engine is equal to w in reference engine into m dot by m reference engine to the power a is equal to t by t reference to the power a and also the length of engine turbojet engine l engine is equal to uh, l reference engine into m dot by m reference to the power 2a minus 1 by 2 that's equal to t by t reference to the power whole to the power 2a minus 1 by 2 where the value of a is in between 0.8 to 1.3 so this is the concept of turbojet engine sizing
next is installed trust corrections the trust that is reported by the engine manufacturers is referred to as the uninstalled trust that is it is the trust that is produced by the engine at a test stand so the trust that is relevant to the aircraft performance is referred to as installed trust the installed trust is the uninstalled trust that is corrected for installation effects minus any drag produced by the propulsion system installation effects include inlet pressure recovery bleed air power extraction inlet airflow distortion effect exit nozzle performance etc added propulsion drag can originate from inlet drag caused by air spillage that results from a mismatch in the amount of air demanded by the engine compared to the amount of air delivered to the inlet based on flight condition second one by exit nozzle drag third one trim drag that would result from added control trim that might be needed to offset moments produced by the engine thrust estimates of added propulsion drag are different to find from a conceptual design the effect of the engine installation on the uninstalled thrust can be reasonably estimated for the most significant effects of the inlet pressure recovery and bleed air extraction the uninstalled thrust is based on having a perfect inlet pressure recovery for subsonic mac numbers this is usually the case deviations can occur when mac number is greater than 1 which can which can then give a lower install thrust an estimate of percentage thrust loss is given by cram into pi by p infinity of reference minus pi by p infinity of actual into 100 which gives you the percentage where the where the recovery ratio of reference recovery ratio of the actual uh, the values are given for different mac numbers if it is below mac number it is 1 and if it is above mac number it is minus 0.1 m plus 1.25 and also cram is equal 1.35 minus 0.15 into m minus 1 the actual pressure recovery ratio can vary depending on the inlet design which is based on an ideal mixed compression isentropic spike inlet in commercial jet aircraft air is bled from the engines to circulate inside the cabin the amount of bleed air is typically from 1 to 5% of the total engine mass flow the thrust is proportional to the mass flow rate that is t is equal to t reference into m dot into m reference so that the use of bleed air reduces the engine thrust however it has a disproportionate effect where the percentage loss in thrust is given by c bleed into m dot bleed by m dot engine into 100 where c bleed is almost equal to next spreadsheet in the screen you can see a sample of the spreadsheet so a spreadsheet is always made in an excel file a spreadsheet file named engine.xls is used for sizing turbojet engines used in the design that are based on existing engine data the requirements are based on the cruise conditions which are defined by cruise altitude and mac number the sizing is based on providing thrust that equals the drag at cruise 
So a sample of the spreadsheet is shown in the figure. So this contains the parameter for conceptual supersonic business jet. The top of the spreadsheet contains a summary of the drag calculations for the main aircraft components like fuselage, main wing, horizontal and vertical tail sections. The values of the constituent drag forces are summed in the spreadsheet to yield the total drag that must be offset by the thrust. The next portion of the spreadsheet is designed to calculate the uninstalled thrust for a given engine. This is based on the engine manufacturer's values of static thrust at sea level altitude. The values of the thrust are corrected for altitude and a Mach number in the spreadsheet. The table in the spreadsheet under the heading reference engine contains data for the altitude variation in the pressure ratio and temperature ratio for a standard atmosphere. This is used to correct the sea level engine thrust for altitude. The sea level thrust is input into the top row of thrust column in the table. The remainder of the column displays the altitude corrected thrust. In the uninstalled thrust calculation, the required thrust is equal to the total drag from the above. This is divided by the number of engines N to give the thrust required per engine. At cruise, the engine operate at their cruise rating which, is men which as mentioned earlier corresponds to 80% of SLST rating. The fraction of maximum thrust that is intended for the design is entered into the spreadsheet. The final correction to the static engine thrust is to account for any RAM effect produced by the flight Mach number. This effect is denoted in the spreadsheet as Mach factor. In general, the Mach factor is a number that is greater than or equal to 1, which is multiplied by the static thrust value. For cruise, Mach number less than 1, the factor should be 1 to express the fact that there is a little RAM augmentation of the thrust. The engine scale factor corresponds to the ratio reference thrust to required thrust. This is then used with the reference engine data to determine the weight, length and diameter of the scale engine for the design. Finally, the bottom of the spreadsheet calculates the thrust to weight ratio at takeoff. This is based on the total thrust at sea level per engine times the number of engine times the number of engine scale factor. Propeller propulsion system or propeller propulsive system. For a propeller driven aircraft, the important design parameters that need to be determined are the propeller diameter and the engine shaft power. The propeller generates thrust in the same way that a wing generates lift. As with the wing, the propeller is designed for a particular flight condition that is cruise, takeoff, etc. The non-dimensional forms for the thrust developed and power required for a propeller are given in terms of thrust coefficient CT and power coefficient CP where CT is equal to T by n power 2 into D power 4 and CP is given by P by rho into n power 3 D power 5. Here n is the rotational velocity with units revolutions per second 
d is the propeller diameter rho is the air density the power coefficient can be put in terms of brake horsepower with the proper un proper unit conversion a dimensionless form of the torque q is defined as cq is equal to q by rho n power 2 into d power 5 the propeller efficiency or the propulsive efficiency is defined as the ratio of thrust power output to the shaft power input so eta p is given by t into v by p where v is the true air speed the propulsive efficiency takes into account profile losses with efficiency factor eta naught as well as induced losses with efficiency factor eta i based on this the efficiency is eta p is given by eta p is equal to eta naught into eta i the tip speed of the propeller is given by v tip is equal to pi n d the ratio of true air speed to the tip speed is defined as advanced ratio advanced ratio which is given by j is equal to v by n into d the propeller efficiency can then be expressed in terms of advanced ratio as eta p is equal to j into ct by cp so combining this you get the expression for thrust t is equal to p by n into d into ct by cp which is useful at static condition or at takeoff where the propeller efficiency equation is not usable at velocity is equal to zero in propeller designs the sectional camber is defined by the design lift coefficient CLD the propeller blade platform is expressed by the activity factor AF which represents the integral power absorption capability of all blade elements the activity factor per blade is conventionally defined as AF is equal to 10 power 5 by d power 5 into integration from 0 to R sorry from 0 0.15 R to R C into R cube into dr where C is the local blade cord generally the activity factor is between the range 80 to 200 the actual value depends on the structural characteristics of the propeller blade the lower values correspond to light aircraft and the upper value to turboprop aircraft propeller design for crews the general methodology for designing a propeller propulsion system for crews is outlined as the following steps implemented in a spreadsheet with the file name prop.xls that is this file is generated in excel format the first step start with aircraft conditions at cruise this consists of cruise altitude Mach number which then specifies the air density and velocity second step specify a propeller diameter this may be selected based on physical limits such as ground clearance third step estimate the engine shaft horsepower this is probably the best done by starting with an existing engine whereby the shaft horsepower at a particular rpm is specified an estimate used in selecting the engine can come from 
the equations which you have studied previously assuming a propulsive efficiency of almost 0.8 fourth step specify a propeller tip speed this is best done while also calculating the propeller tip Mach number M tip if the tip Mach number is less than approximately 0.85 compressibility effects on propeller efficiency can be neglected M tip which is less than 0.85 or almost equal to 0.85 is also a good upper limit to minimize propeller generated sound levels next step compute the advance ratio that is j this uses the n that is engine speed from the engine selection and will vary based on selection of tip speed and the propeller diameter sixth step compute the power coefficient it is most it is important to note that if British units are used the proper conversion between pound mass and pound force is needed so that the power coefficient is dimensionless seventh step the value of propeller efficiency and advance ratio are next used with propeller data to determine the propeller efficiency. Next, eighth step. Calculate the thrust coefficient CT based on the equation we have studied in the previous slide. Ninth step. Calculate the thrust, again the value of uh, horsepower can be used for power with the proper units conversion. Last step, the thrust from the previous step is then compared to the required thrust which must equal the drag at cruise. If it is too large or small. The most straightforward approach is to change the horsepower. If an existing engine is to be used without notification, the alternative is to vary the propeller design until the thrust equals the drag. So in this session, we have studied about the engine selection, the number of factors for selecting the propulsion systems, Next, uh, we have studied uh, how many, uh, on what basis the number of engines must be used and the engine rating. Then we have studied about turbojet engine sizing, what are all the different variables and, and uh, finally to find out the weight of the engine and length of the turbojet engine. After that, we have studied the concept of installed thrust corrections then we have uh, seen an example of spreadsheet for turbojet engine sizing what are all the contents present in the spreadsheet and final and then we have studied about propeller propulsion system uh, and uh, in order to find the efficiency and uh, the power coefficient thrust coefficient and finally activity factor then uh, finally, we have studied uh, some of the general methodology for designing propeller propulsion system for crews. So this is the end of the first session on uh, the propulsion system, uh, engine selection, aircraft engine selection. So if you have any doubts, clarifications, suggestions, please comment below. If you want to know more about the flight vehicle design, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.